But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. They are guilty of an eternal sin. Sometimes it's called the unforgivable sin. Sometimes it's called the eternal sin, blasphemy of the Spirit. First clue is to read the next verse. If you're ever struggling with a passage and you're not sure what's going on, just keep reading. A lot of times stuff gets sorted out. So Jesus says, whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. They're guilty of an eternal sin. Verse 30, Mark tells us that Jesus said that because these other guys were saying he has an impure spirit. So you got teachers of the law from Jerusalem who are saying you got a devil in you. And Jesus says, you better watch out because blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is unpardonable, eternal, unforgivable. He has an impure spirit. Watch out, blasphemy of the spirit. So the context helps us see what's happening here. These guys, whom Jesus is warning, have seen the work of God in Jesus. Remember when Jesus started his ministry, the spirit descended on him. And with his body, he carried the presence of God in the power of the Spirit into the land. And then he did the work of the Spirit. He healed people. He forgave sins. He restored. He cast out demons. And these teachers of the law, men who've spent their life studying the Scriptures, they've been to seminary. They may even have a Ph.D. They're supposed to know this stuff. And they look at a man who's working in the power of the Holy Spirit of God, and they say, all we see is the devil. That's blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. And it's not unforgivable because Jesus won't forgive it. It's unforgivable because their hearts are so far gone that repentance is out of the question. So I tell people when they tell me they're worried about having blasphemed the Holy Spirit, I usually say, if you're worried about it, you're fine. These guys aren't worried about it, are they? Like if you're worried about it, it means that your conscience isn't seared so bad that you wouldn't be worried about it, <laughs> right? Consciences are seared. They are not in step with the Spirit. They're not even close. They're on the other side of the world from where the Holy Spirit is. They're eyes are so darkened, their hearts are so crusty and hard that they look at the work of God to free people and bring them into flourishing. They look at Jesus bringing broken and hurting people into an experience of his best. And they say, the devil is at work here. If you take the work of the Spirit of God and attribute it to the devil, takes a pretty hard heart. Some of you may have read the Narnia series. We're talking C.S. Lewis a little bit today, so we'll keep going. Uh, the sixth book, if they're read in the right order, uh, let the reader understand, is The Magician's Nephew. And in that story, there's a character named Uncle Andrew. And he's, he's, sort of a, he's, sort of, he's a magician, but he's not a very good one. Uh, and so he's kind of like lower level. He's not like, he's not a heavy hitter with some of the other ones in the story. And, and, and he's constantly trying to just play little tricks and manipulate. And he doesn't care who he manipulates as long as he gets what he wants, even children. So his nephew is staying with him and the little girl next door. And he sends them off on dangerous things, not knowing what's going to happen to him so he can increase his power. And through the story, things just get worse and worse for Uncle Andrew. It gets so bad. And he winds up just kind of crazy hardened. He goes from just being kind of a, an unkind manipulator to just being a shell of a person. It just gets worse and worse and worse. Well, at one point of the story, his nephew goes up to Aslan. Aslan is the Christ figure in the stories, the redeemer. And the little boy, his name's Diggory, he says, Aslan, look at how pitiful Uncle Andrew is. Can't you just speak Words of comfort to him. And Aslan responds and says, I could. But with the state he's in, I could spe speak the sweetest words of comfort. Aslan's a lion. 
I could speak the sweetest words of comfort and he would only hear me roar. Jesus is in their midst, forgiving sin and making people whole, speaking words of sweet comfort, and all they hear is a roar. They're not worried about repentance because they are consumed with themselves. They are consumed with their agenda, with their own rightness, with their own power, and it doesn't matter who gets hurt or who gets manipulated or who gets sidestepped or who gets stepped on. Their hearts are so far from him that he could offer them his perfect love and they'll offer him a cross. Jesus says, I can't forgive that. Not because I won't, because you won't surrender. 